Hey Bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are talking about equipment for new formulators. What you need, what it's for, what to consider, where to get it. Let's dive in. Today's video and partner blog post are part one of a two-part series, 10 pieces of equipment for new formulators. So today we are going to talk about the first five things you need, and then in a couple weeks we'll be talking about the other five things that you need, and the partner blog posts also contain honorable mentions, so things that are useful to have, but depending on what you're planning on formulating, you may or may not need them. Wondering what ingredients to start with? I recently did a two-part series on 10 ingredients for new formulators, so make sure you're checking those out. I'll link to them in the description box below this video. The first First piece of equipment we are talking about today and arguably the most important one is your scale. You need a scale to weigh out all your ingredients, weighing everything. You need a scale for everything. Precisely what you need in a scale will vary depending on what you are making, but a big, big thing, you want a digital scale. You want a scale that's going to read out hard numbers rather than a kind of fun old-timey one that has a needle that swings back and forth. When purchasing a scale, the two biggest considerations that you'll find as you're shopping around and looking at specs is how precise the scale is and its maximum weight, the heaviest thing that you can put on it before it's going to start screaming at you and or break. The more precise the scale is and the higher its maximum weight, typically the more expensive it is, so it can make sense depending on your budget and your needs and what you want to make to have a scale that is more precise with a lower maximum weight and a scale that's a little bit less precise but has a higher maximum weight. As a new formulator, precision is more important than a very high maximum weight. Very high maximum weights accommodate very large batches nicely, but as a new formulator, you shouldn't be making very large batches of things right off the bat. You will instead be making lots of little small test batches to get to know your ingredients and to trial and iterate your formulations. Say you're working on a formulation that calls for an ingredient at half a percent, which is pretty common if you are working with Liquid Germal Plus as your preservative. Its maximum usage rate is half a percent, 0.5%. If your scale can only measure in one gram increments, that means that every time you make that formulation, assuming 0.5% is your lowest use amount, in order to weigh that out, you have to make a 200 gram batch of something because that's where we get to the point where 0.5% is one gram and one gram is the smallest amount that your scale can weigh out. So making 200 grams of something every time you're you know, iterating, you start to have an just a, a lot of product around, like 200 grams of, of lotion is a lot of lotion. And then if you make it five different times, now you have a kilo of different lotions on hand and uh, that, that, that's a lot. However, if your scale is just one decimal point more precise, so to 0.1 grams instead of one gram, now you could make a 20 gram batch of that formulation if you wanted to because you can weigh out that half a percent because it's now 0.1 grams instead of one gram. So here are a few of the scales that I own right now. These two are more of the expensive ones. Uh, this one's kind of middle grade and this one is a bit cheaper. I do recommend starting with something on the less expensive side if you are new to making. So for something like this, this is kind of a jewelry scale. And so this measures down to 0.01 grams, but the maximum weight is 100 grams. So this is very useful for making cosmetics and weighing out your cool down phase. I've had quite a few scales from Smartway over the years. They're generally good, but they do tend to eventually break. I'd call these two my sort of all purpose scales. I use them the most. This one definitely gets the most use. I bought it after I bought this one. It was more expensive than this one. So this is a scale from Jennings, and I do have the names and links for all these scales in the partner blog post. But this one weighs up to a maximum of 500 grams at 0.01 gram increments, which is so useful and covers the vast majority of my use cases. This one goes up to 700 grams, so 200 grams more than this scale, with a precision of 0.1 one gram. So both of these scales have been very useful. I've had both of these for years and they have held out beautifully and they both plug in, which is really, really nice. So they don't automatically shut off when you're working on them. If you've ever had that happen, it's so, so, so frustrating and just like, ah, to be, you know, weighing something else slowly. And the scales just like, oh 
I'm done. I'm tired of waiting for you. And it's like, nah, how much was in there? So I really like that about these scales. When you are first getting started, I would look at getting a scale that has a precision of at least 0.1 grams, but 0.01 grams is better. And looking for a maximum weight in around at least 500 grams. Precisely what you end up getting will depend a lot on your budget and what is available for you. Amazon certainly sells quite a lot of different scales and I know I got started with some smart way scales that were accurate to 0.1 grams and typically had a maximum weight around a kilo or a thousand grams. If you're looking to spend a bit more on a scale, I've had good experiences with the brands Jennings and My Way. Depending on exactly what you get and where you live, you'll probably end up spending between 20 and 80 dollars on a scale when you are getting started the more you spend the longer it will probably last there's almost no upper limit to how much money you can spend if you go to canadianway.com and look through their offerings like there are some really really expensive and very like intense looking scales there you don't need to spend hundreds of dollars but do do figure you'll be spending at least 20 dollars and of course balance how much money you have to spend now with sort of how long you would like the scale to last. But generally speaking, yeah, like a $20 smart way scale that's accurate to like 0.1 grams and uh, goes up to 500 to 1000 grams maximum weight, perfectly fine place to get started. So our next category is stirring implements. I originally considered making like multiple categories for all the different types of stirring implements I like, but since this list is only supposed to be 10 things long, Kind of felt like having half of them be stirring implements was a little bit overkill. So we are grouping this together into the great big category of stuff to stir and mash and scrape and uh, yeah, stirring things. So if you've watched many of my videos, you will know I adore these spatulas. So these are the Nor Pro jar spatula. They're really flexible. They've got like a very thin blades super useful for scraping stuff around they're nice and bendy so you can really like smear across the bottom of your container to make sure you're breaking up any clumps brilliant for really scraping every last little bit of something out of there nice and small so it works great with small batches like i absolutely adore these things i have so many of them their weakness is that the handle tends to break which is a bummer but i highly 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 recommend these i ended up i bought my first one when I was in university just for getting the like last little bits of peanut butter out of a jar. And once I started formulating, it quickly became only my formulating spatula. And then when the handle on that one broke, I went out and bought like 25 more of them because they are fantastic. So highly, highly recommended. Something else that's a good idea to have on hand are some little wire whisks. You can usually buy these in like a pack of five or 10. They're not expensive and they're really, really useful for you know blending your ingredients into the cool down phase of a lotion, really stirring watery things, very handy, inexpensive, definitely worth picking up some of these. And then the last category of stirring type implements that I say you need are just some spoons. I just have a bunch of miscellaneous random spoons that I picked up at thrift stores and op shops and whatnot. They're just spoons. I use them to scoop ingredients out of bags. You know, you've got a bag of like panthenol or a jar of it, you know, you could just scoop it out and then that's your panthenol spoon and then you put that in the dishes tub to wash so that you know you've always got a bunch of clean spoons for scooping ingredients out with don't be too fussy about these cheap reusable durable washable secondhand spoons are totally fine super awesome do the trick and then for some stirring implements that are a little bit less necessary big spatulas are useful i mostly use these for making soap i really like these ones in particular because they're just a solid piece so you don't have the opportunity for anything to kind of work its way up into a separate head. A nice thin blade, nice and flexible, but yeah, I mostly use this for making soap because very little of what I make is a big enough batch to warrant needing a spatula that is this surface area. For next category of stirring implements that you don't need, but you know, kind of fun to have, stirring rods. This one is glass, this one is plastic. The plastic ones are definitely less useful. They're cheaper, but also they melt and uh, definitely don't age quite as well. They're not useful for as long, just useful for stirring things. <laughs> but really it's nothing that a good old spatula can't do. And then these are different types of lab spoons. Um, I find honestly that I use these mostly for when I'm making makeup. I love the like flat end of this and the little rounded kind of flat end of this for stirring up cream makeup. So you will have seen me use spoons like this 
in the cream eyeliner and cream eyeshadow formulations that I shared recently. So if you like making makeup, I think these are really useful. I honestly don't use them all that much for uh, like other kind of skincare types of formulation, but you know, they're fun. They're like, if you like spoons and tools, uh, <laughs> they're, they're a fun little thing to have in your studio as well, but not necessary. For stirring implements, I recommend starting with some of my favorite bendy awesome spatulas, a couple you know, wire whisks, and some miscellaneous used spoons that you buy at the thrift store. The next type of equipment you'll need is a selection, a collection of heat shock resistant glassware. So we use this to make pretty much everything. You can heat it up, you can put it in an ice bath. Uh, the glass has a nice high heat capacity, so that means that things go slowly with it, which is very much appreciated if you're you know, working to bring something to trace. It'll cool down slowly and evenly as you work. Now, heat resistant glass measuring cups like these ones from Pyrex or also Anchor Hawking is, is a common brand. These are often gonna be the easiest things to find. I usually buy these second hand. This is a two cup one, this is a one cup one, and those are generally your most useful sizes. After the two cup, we go up to four cup and that's, that's about a liter, a lot of room, which you probably won't need when you are first getting started. So these are a great place to get started and nice and easy to find. You can also, of course, buy beakers. And one of the biggest strengths of beakers over uh, glass measuring cups is that they come in smaller sizes. So this is a cute little like 50 milliliter one and I've even seen even tinier ones for sale. Uh, and another benefit of beakers is that they are lighter. So if you have a scale that has a maximum weight of 100 grams, one of these, especially with much of anything in it, gonna be more than 100 grams. So that can uh, be very difficult. You can't really put this on your scale and then weigh stuff into it because it's going to blow out the maximum weight of your scale. So something like a beaker, it's much lighter and so is a little bit more versatile that way. When you're first getting started, I would recommend at least three or four of the one and two cup size heat resistant glass measuring cups. Go ahead and thrift them if you can, save a bit of money and you know, avoid buying something new where possible. They're incredibly, incredibly useful. And even though I have a pretty good size collection of beakers, now I still use my measuring cups all the time. The next piece of equipment that you absolutely need as a new formulator, as a formulator of, of any vintage, of any experience level, is a notebook. You gotta write everything down. Write down all your formulations, write down how you mix them up and, and what happened and did you add a little bit too much of something and just absolutely everything. The date and the color and just all the things. You wanna write down all the things everywhere, every time because uh, you won't remember. The number of things that I have found in my studio where I look at it and the only thing I can remember about it is that I told myself that I would remember Oh, it's very frustrating. So yeah, a notebook to write all the things down and then kind of as a dovetail, label the things that you make so that you can tie them back to the notes in your notebook. Precisely what you use for a notebook really doesn't matter. It should be a thing that you like to write in. That's about it. I highly recommend making sure it is like a paper thing uh, because it's, it's just, it's a little less risky. If you're taking all your notes on an iPad, but you've got really messy hands, that can, that can get kind of messy for your iPad. So you can, you can transcribe things later if you like things digital, but I highly recommend just like a paper thing. This is a Hillroy five subject, 360 page lined notebook. I really like that it's spiral bound so I can kind of flip it back like that and it takes up a little bit less space on the countertop. Uh, but yeah, seriously, just like anything, anything that you will write in and uh, that, that you're excited to fill up with your creations will totally work. Uh, there's, yeah, there's no super serious technical requirements for a notebook. Just make sure you have one. Piece of equipment number five in this list is a water bath. Basically just a pan. If you already have a set of pots and pans at home, you're golden. I usually use this. It's a wide flat bottom saute pan because, you know, I can fit a couple different things in it. This could be, you know, my oil phase of a lotion and this is the water phase of my lotion. And then I put an inch or so of water in the bottom of the the pan and I put this on my stove over medium low heat and it just gently heats everything through and because it's right out on the stove top I can you know I can keep an eye on it I can come in and I can give some things a stir and a bit of a poke and see how they're doing and how they're melting and what's going on things go nice and slowly and gently it's hard to burn things in a water bath unless you kind of let all the water evaporate off yeah but this this is this is not a really a shopping list thing if you have any pots and pans at home you are 
you're golden. I'm often asked about using a microwave instead of a water bath. I don't love microwaves because they happen really quickly. It, you can burn things. Uh, if you're heating something that already has some kind of a surfactant plus water in it, it creates a volcano. Uh, and you just, you, you can't really keep an eye on it like you can if it's on the stovetop. So I rarely choose to microwave things. A lot of the times, you could microwave it, but it's just almost never a first choice for me to microwave something. That could be a cultural thing. I get the feeling from the comments that I read that Americans like microwaves a lot more than Canadians. I mean, I like my microwave just fine, but uh, if you Google like boiling water in a microwave and Canadians, <laughs> you will find a bunch of like tweets from Canadians reading about how Americans will apparently boil water for tea in the microwave and how it's it's kind of a crime. Like, I don't, I can't explain it to you. I know it is not logical, but the idea of boiling water to make a cup of tea by microwaving a mug of water makes me feel like deeply unsettled. And there we go. So those are five of the 10 pieces of equipment that you should have as a new formulator. A versatile scale, some handy dandy stirring implements, some heat resistant glass workwear for making the things in, a notebook, your beloved notebook, and some sort of like pot or pan to turn into a water bath. Make sure you are reading the Full Partner blog post for way more information, links to the different things that I have here, more information on them, uh, the honorable mentions, and stay tuned for part two. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.